Welcome to the next frontier in technology, the Apple Vision Pro, Apple's new spatial computer. If you are watching this video, you have heard about or seen the new Apple Vision Pro, and you are wondering how you will be able to make use of and develop apps for this new device. In this video, we are going to show you what Apple has presented to us so far on how to prepare for the launch of the Vision Pro early next year and its software, namely Vision OS. XR is here to stay, and now is the best time in history to learn this amazing technology. Even though the hardware is not available at the moment, Apple has given us some hints on how to prepare ourselves for the launch of the Vision Pro and develop apps for Vision OS. The Vision Pro opens up new possibilities for immersive experiences, from entertainment and design to education and beyond. But the Vision Pro isn't just about consuming content, it's also about creating new worlds. This is where XR development comes in. By learning XR development now, you can be at the forefront of this expanding field, creating innovative applications and experiences for devices like the Vision Pro or MetaQuest. The launch of the Vision Pro is a clear signal that XR is not just the future, it's the present. There's no better time to start learning and innovating in this exciting area of technology. In this video, we are going to cover how to develop apps for the Vision Pro using the most popular XR game engine, Unity. Apple has been working together with Unity to enable us to create apps with Unity Engine and leverage all the possibilities that come with Unity and its existing software. Unity is arguably the most famous game engine, and about 70% of all XR applications are made with Unity. This is why we highly recommend you to focus on Unity development as the best way to prepare yourself for the future of XR. If you want to be a programmer, UX or sound designer, or a 3D modeler for XR experiences, Unity is where you should start your journey. Get good at using the Unity Editor and learn about the basic concepts of C-sharp coding and game development, and you will be perfectly prepared for the next wave of XR. In the description below, you can find a link on how to sign up to Unity's beta program for Vision OS. In the meantime, keep developing experiences with Unity, since Unity and Apple made it super easy to bring our existing apps and knowledge over to the new Vision Pro. So enough talking and let's look at the information from two presentations that Apple together with Unity gave us at the Worldwide Developer Conference 2023. We are going to look at how you can use Unity to create engaging and immersive experiences for Vision OS, as well as how you can bring your existing Unity VR apps and games to this new platform. In the first presentation, we explored how we can use Unity to create engaging and immersive experiences for Vision OS. There will be two ways of building apps for the Vision Pro immersive apps that utilize its pass-through mode and mix the real world with virtual objects, or a fully immersive VR app. Unity has developed Unity Polyspatial to translate materials, shaders, mesh renderers, particle effects, and sprites over to Vision OS. Also, we can use other familiar tools such as scriptable objects and mono behaviors, just like we used to for other Unity games. Unity developers can either use the built-in or universal render pipeline, the high-definition render pipeline is not supported for Vision Pro as for any other standalone headset. Unity materials built with URP-based shaders convert to Reality Kit's physically-based material. Reality Kit is Apple's own framework for developing AR experiences. Thanks to Unity, however, you will be able to build anything you want just inside of the Unity editor itself. One very important thing, especially for AR apps, is the support of occlusion shaders, which allows you to occlude certain areas of your scene, for example where your door or wall is in the real world. To speed up our development process, Unity allows us to use XR simulators, which mean we don't actually need a device to develop, and can use our editor instead to fly through and interact with our experience. If we have a device however, we can use the play to device feature of Polyspatial. This means we can directly test and edit our app from the editor, and don't have to go through the whole build process. This helps to quickly resize and reposition objects, change materials and shaders and test out your app in general. Polyspatial offers two types of volume cameras, bounded and unbounded. Your application can switch between the two at any time. The bounded volume camera exists in shared space with other apps, slash games, has dimensions and a transform in Unity, a real-world size, and can be moved but not resized. The unbounded volume camera displays in full space, letting content blend fully with pass-through. It has no dimensions as it utilizes the entire scene. It's transform map scene units to real-world units, and only one can be active at a time. We will use this mostly for AR or pass-through apps. Let's look at some short clips from Apple to better visualize this. Here we can see a bounded volume. 
we see a preview of the volume in green in the Unity scene view. The scene stays the same, but the volume can be moved or resized to bring different parts of the scene into the volume. Unbounded volumes on the other hand have no specified dimension since they display the full available space and allows to blend the content with pass-through mode. There can only be one unbounded volume camera active at a time. AR data such as plane detection, world mesh and image markers that can be used for pass-through apps are only available for unbounded volumes. On Vision Pro, we will mainly use our eyes and hands to look at content and tap their fingers together to select it. Full hand tracking as well as hand pose data lets us create realistic interactions. There is also support for Bluetooth devices such as keyboards and game controllers. We will be able to directly touch object or interact with them from a distance. Interactable objects will need to have an input colliders in order to interact with it. In Unity, tap events will be very similar to taps on a 2D screen. But for Vision OS, we will even get a full 3D position for our taps. We highly recommend you to get familiar with Unity's new hand package, which is part of the XR Interaction Toolkit, that lets you get low-level hand data from devices that support hand tracking such as the Oculus Quest 2 or 3, and lets you design all kinds of new interactions. This will come in handy, since we will also get hands data from Apple Vision Pro in the same exact way. Lastly, for this session, here is how to adapt existing interactions to Vision Pro. If you are using touch input on your 2D phone screen, all you have to do is add input colliders to your objects. If your experience is using controllers, you will need to redefine your interactions in terms of either tap or hand-based input to convert to hand tracking. Existing hands-based input should work without changes for Vision Pro. Also, Unity UI systems can be brought to the Vision OS platform without issues. Now let's quickly take a look at the second Unity session at Apple's WWDC 23. There they talked about how to bring our Unity VR apps to a fully immersive space. When building for Vision OS, we can use our existing knowledge from building for iOS apps. We will also get an Xcode project from which we can either build to the Vision Pro, or if we don't have the device, we can build to the Xcode simulator. Keep in mind that this means that you will need a PC with Mac OS since you will need Xcode to deploy apps for Apple Vision Pro. By using the universal render pipeline, we can take advantage of the static foveated rendering. Foveated rendering is a technique where our device is concentrating more pixel density in the center of each lens, where the eye is more likely to be focused. As we have already heard in the last session, Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit, together with its hand package, is enabling us to get hand data and create unique experiences. It is a high-level interaction system that makes it easy to translate input into interactions by using an action map, which contains different input action references for predefined buttons or hand gestures. The toolkit not only includes interactions, but also a locomotion system to move in a virtual space. We highly recommend you to learn about the XR Interaction Toolkit by watching our How to Make a VR Game Beginner series. It will be the basis for building your future XR experiences on the Apple Vision Pro. For a quick recap, the XR industry is growing rapidly and you can start building for the Apple Vision Pro today. We recommend you to get familiar with the Unity engine and especially its new input system as well as UI system. Use the universal render pipeline to take advantage of static foveated rendering Make sure to also get familiar with Unity's hand package as well as the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit to leverage your knowledge to the fullest and be as ready as it gets for the launch of the Apple Vision Pro. To learn more, check out all Apple Vision OS sessions by yourself. To be the first to create apps for Apple's Vision OS platform, don't forget to sign up at unity.com spatial to get early beta access. Also, keep an eye out for Apple's Vision Pro Dev Kit. The registration will start sometime in July of this year. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. This will help us make more such content. Please consider subscribing to our Patreon, or for more information or any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. We can't wait to see what you guys will build. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.